Hello, this is the 2018 LEGO Harry Potter Great Hall set, which features details that are taken from, I believe it's the first three years of the story. Chronologically, they let you begin at the beginning of any school year. They have the smallest representation of a boat dock out front. It's just off at an angle, and it's just a little dark brown plank. It's, it's just barely enough to kind of get the idea across and they do include the boat itself which is just the long-standing uh, wooden dinghy mold that actually will float if you don't have too many people in it it will hold a bunch of folks and they just put a, a a lantern post small build inside of it they have a couple of the statues along the sides of the main entrance there the the clock face is a sticker sand green colored ski piece used up at the the top there is another one also at the very top of the the tall tower with the staircase inside of it you'll see a bunch of stickers on the outside i'm i'm good with those i'm okay with those because they definitely add a lot of much needed detail uh, rather than requiring the use of countless additional pieces which would have driven up the the price and also resulted in a a design that just wasn't as smooth within this scale. It, it would work better if you were doing you know, a super creator, creator expert set to do those with individual pieces. New pieces and or new colors around here. So on the top of the roof, those are not cheese slope pieces. Those are a new double angle, double, uh, double slope part, one by one by two thirds angle in from both directions. They've also used the pyramid shaped versions, versions of those in tan, and also the kind of spear points, four-sided spear points in tan along the sides. These windows have the grates in them, and those are the, the smallest standard Lego, uh, Lego windows. There are just a lot of them there, and they've created a insert part that matches the design that we've had for quite a while for the arched style window, so it matches that design back over there. And it's just in this size and shape which looks really good from the outside and from the inside and they've also used that exact same design around here and that also looks really good the colors chosen for this whole thing a whole thing i think are very good i appreciate uh the the variation you know they they tried to keep it from being too boring it's not just a big old mass of of tan overall looks pretty good from the outside but most of the work done on this to design it and to build it is all about the interior speaking of which you do need to open the doors from the inside but once you do you get a nice view down into that hall and oh that looks pretty good it just needs some supplemental lighting in there they don't let you take the roof off of this but yeah the details are good let's look at it from a better angle yeah, this is a pretty nice scene. Given the very limited amount of space that's available in, in the set, you know, relative to the size of the actual Great Hall, I think that the right level of detail was used here, and you can put a lot of students at these tables, and they work just fine, I think, with the, the little short-legged figures, even though, you know, they're not able to, to bend their legs to sit. I think the proportions work out okay and you can also move those short-legged figures in a little bit closer to the table if you want and have them just standing on the ground which which might even work out a little bit better you have seating for three faculty members up there and they've got some some goblets there's also the trophy back behind there yeah, and you know the windows just really look nice up above you get some of the floating candles with the new candle piece a candlestick piece and a candle flame piece for uh, for 2018. They have all four houses represented up top, but you can only see banners for two of them at a time, unfortunately. You just have to reverse these around if you want to see the others. And they don't give you duplicates of any of these stickers, so if you want to have the big celebration of the winning house at the end of a year, uh, yeah, you might want to just try to bricklink some more sticker sheets or just print out your own it would be a lot cheaper but you know, they use the space that they had I think as best reasonably possible and it, it just looks good the only thing that I don't like here is as I mentioned previously it's a little bit difficult to get light into this space uh, a lot of light is is blocked from the end here and a lot of 
light is blocked from the top because the, the roof does come almost halfway over. Uh, so yeah, it's just a, a little bit limiting. It keeps it from being as bright as I would like it to be, but the build is pretty proper. I wanted to try to give you this low angle also looking back towards the, the back of the room so you can see how the, the light comes through the new window insert elements. I feel like it looks a little bit better in person than I'm able to capture on camera. Things in the tower section of the build are relatively quite limited. I mean, for stairs, you get a single spiral staircase that can be moved out of the way like so, revealing a broom over there, and that's just it. But, I mean, this this is nice. I've, I like these staircase, the spiral staircase pieces, and how they go together. They've had that around for quite a long time. But, you know, there's not all that much in terms of access. You can get up to this level, which has some potions in there and some other ingredients. A large cauldron, small cauldron. You know, that looks good enough. But you can really, realistically, only put, what, two figures in there? You know, one facing that way and maybe just, yeah, there we go. One facing that way to get, you know, a little bit of variety. But that's just that. And then you don't have any access to the next level up with the treasure room. Got Hedwig hanging up, hanging out up there right now. And this is just the basic uh, reddish brown color. And inside are some gems, five different colors of gems. If the, the two bluish ones look similar, it's because they are similar, but one of them is actually technically purple. The other one's a dark blue. And you also get the newer style of of uh, spider, the more recent mold, in just a, a regular black, and that really gets stuck in there, I found, if you really put it down onto a plate where it fully fits in, but a pretty realistic looking thing, especially in black, and especially as it kind of slith slithers around and <laughs> scurries around in your hand if you have it at an angle like that. And then finally up to the top, ah yes, this is good, although there's really no space to use it properly. Certainly looks good on its own though. They have five stickers used around the outside just for the frame and then the highly reflective sticker used for the image that appears in it. So this was, I believe, the first image that was ever, ever shown, the first vision that was ever shown in it. But of course, there are multiple visions to show and they do give you alternate stickers so you can just uh, uh, you know, swap that, that piece around so you can have this facing towards the front. Here's another that makes sense. Sorry, trying to get that so you can see it evenly. And there's also one other still. Uh, I don't think they ever showed this one though, did they, on screen? With the mirror of Erised removed, there is a perch behind it. And I've placed the brick built uh, minifig scaled fox there. Uh, that's pretty appropriate looking, uh, you know, for, for a build, something that's not made with a specialized mold. But you can also put a uh, headwig back there, or you could also place the, the sorting hat back there if you want to use that for storage. But that does bring us to the end of the look at the entire build, really. So let's get into some of the smaller details, like the sorting hat. It actually gets a specialized mold with the face on it and everything for this set, not just a generic wizard hat. I mean, the generic wizard hats, I think, were perfectly fine, but I feel like this is going to be a, a very collectible piece long term that uh, really serious Harry Potter fans will want to hold on to. And even folks who aren't really into Lego that much, if barely at all, may want to get this. And, you know, fortunately, there are aftermarket ways to get individual pieces without buying entire large expensive sets but uh, there are other reasons to want to collect small things in this set as well as you'll see very soon this is the last proper build i guess that it, i haven't shown you yet in this set it's the basilisk and yeah it's it's okay you know it's i feel like it's a bit small um and i mean there's only so much that you can do with this size i feel like this was one of the, the last things that was designed. They had a very limited parts budget that was still available after designing everything else. And yeah, it, it's okay. For its size, I think it's it's fine. You can articulate upper and lower jaws. 
Got the suggestion of the eye there, and light actually comes through that, so that's good. And then you have all these Mixel-style style ball joints, so you can make it kind of look like it's slithering around. Slithering around a bit works best on the ground. It's actually difficult to get it to rear up unless you just coil the tail in one direction. But yeah, it's, it's okay, you know? Focusing all the way in on the figures, here we have Dumbledore and McGonagall, and the prints for each of these look fantastic to me. They are so luxurious. Their robes really did good justice to them, I believe. And check out Dumbledore there with his new hairpiece. That's interesting. They kind of went above and beyond. I thought the, the previous one that was used just as long hair in general was fine, but this is certainly better. Hopefully they will be able to find more uses for that hairpiece in the future on different figures, different characters. It's good stuff as well. Yeah, good stuff all around, including on the backs of these torsos and with their alternate face prints. So for Dumbledore, you get the face with no spectacles, no glasses on. And uh, it, it, it works just fine with the, the beard on, with the beard off, you know, the beard piece. It looks a little bit odd. I don't know, let me know what you think about that. I think this one looks a little bit better to me, but uh, I mean, he's supposed to always have the, the beard piece on, I suppose. But yeah, just really good prints on every single printed piece that I see here. And of course, the different colored wands. Here's Harry and Ron with their different colored wands. Of course, the generic Gryffindor uh, outfits, the torso prints that will work for any students of the house, including ones that you make up yourself. Harry looks very good with the new hairpiece, in my opinion. And each of these gets an alternate face, I think. Uh, again, I've said this on, on my last review. I think the faces, both faces that they chose or that they designed for Ron don't look that great to me. Don't look that much like the actual actor, whereas what they did for Harry is pretty much spot on. Here's Hermione with, again, that exact same torso print. And on the right is Susan Bones with the generic Hufflepuff uh, outfit. So all good once again. An existing hairpiece. Uh, possibly recolored for the first time in dark orange for, for Bones there on the right, and the new for 2018 hairpiece for Hermione looks fantastic to me. Definitely look forward to that one being used again in the future, hopefully, on other characters than just this one in particular. And this is a, a rubbery hairpiece here, so it kind of grabs on to the, the headpiece. Good alternate faces for each of these. They're, they're not too expressive. There's not a whole lot going on there, but I do think they are appropriate. Here's Professor Quirrell and nearly headless Nick of the Knights Who Say Knee. Uh, two <laughs> very good figures. Once again, uh, Quirrell looks just fine here. It doesn't look too fantastic, but once you take off the headgear, you'll see something very good for that one that is a new kind of turban piece, not the existing design. Again, I'm surprised that they came up with something new for this character. It does look very good. It does look updated from the old one. You know, it, it's it's more fine with its sculpting and uh, hopefully they'll be able to use that further in the future as well. But his alternate face is the most perfect <laughs> because Correct me if I'm wrong on this, I think this is the only uh, character that Lego has ever given a double-sided face that belongs oriented only one way. You know, the uh, the face of, of the one who must not be named is supposed to be on the back of his head. So that's, that's just perfect. That's exactly how it should be. And then you also get an alternate face for Nick. And uh, I really like the torso print for Nick there. Uh, has that that nice and also the the prints on the legs and hip pieces has that nice bright silver color that really shines and I don't know against the against the light gray it feels a little bit ethereal in in person maybe maybe that's not coming through on camera quite as well as it ought to Hagrid is quite a sight to behold with the specialized torso and specialized arm pieces this is a great looking figure, if you ask me. 
Could have used just a little bit of molding on the front of that torso, I think, personally. Because, you know, they put the, the pockets in it. But I think it could have used just a little bit of something on the front as well. Just a little bit, little bit of depth. But the graphic there, the print, is very good. They got the metallic color for the, the belt buckle. The hairpiece is great. He's got the new for 2018 lantern, you know, hand lantern piece, which is just kind of the, the basket or the cage for it. They just put a regular one by one cylinder piece down the center of that. You can change that out for any color. And there is no, no secondary face for Hagrid. That was a little bit of a letdown. His main face works really well. I, I think this matches the, the cinematic actor actually pretty well uh, with the with the hair off and that still continues to work with it on but it would have been nice to get different eyes for him maybe something a little bit more relaxed looking at the underside of that torso it's mostly hollow and it does use just short legs and dark brown i saved draco malfoy for last because he belongs last Buh, buh. Generic Slytherin uh, torso piece, though, can be used for any any student you like. And he does have a secondary face, which is even more mean and nasty. It has a little bit of extra dust on it there. But yeah, this, this is actually pretty good for what it is. Even though it's him, I, I think that the figure, at least, is, is done well. And uh, you know what? I think I like that, that alternate face a little bit better. Let me actually swing that around with this hair piece just so that you can see how that gets kind of framed up. You already saw a Hedwig, but I did want to show it to you from some different angles if you're not familiar with this one. A pretty good mold. Doesn't have too much detail in it, which I think is is fine and kind of appropriate to the Lego style. And I do like the shaping of the eyes there. The print in general is good. It's recognizable. And here's Scabbers himself, officially. It's using the newer mold from lego for a generic rat and it's just molded in dark tan i think it looks perfectly fine but it is a little bit on the large side for uh for child-sized minifigs one last thing i needed to show you is how the great hall is designed to have the whomping willow main structure build added on to it it just attaches straight in with a couple of Technic pins and all the parts are included so you just snap it together and helps to you know increase the overall size and and breadth and playability of what you get for the Hogwarts castle there was one small little issue putting these together from the back right where the spiral staircase is uh, by default in the Whomping Willow section of it that's over to the left uh, Whomping Willow set section of it uh, there is a second lamp on the wall, so you do need to remove that just to have space for the, the stairs to come out. Uh, also, uh, the smaller set has some separate sections that can be taken apart. So there's a there's a crease right there, there's a seam right there, there's a seam right here, and then there's also a seam over here. At each of those, you can see the Technic pins going through the Technic bricks. So you can take those apart, rearrange them if you want, and you can also attach things to the other side of the Great Hall because they do have a couple more Technic bricks on the sides there. So just a little bit more modularity if you want to change things up. So what do you know? The official Great Hall set has a very, very good Great Hall. Uh, but it's not great. In order to be a great Great Hall set, it would have had to be much larger, which would mean it would have to be significantly more expensive. So many mock builders over the, out there over the years have built truly great, great halls in Lego, but they cost fortunes, scary, scary amounts of money, uh, almost unspeakable amounts of money for, for the really big and really amazing ones. So given the constraints and, you know, putting this into a box that can be sold at stores at a reasonable price, uh, I, I, I really can't complain. Uh, this tower looks very good from the outside. From the inside, it is lacking, in my opinion, overall. Uh, it would have been nice to get a similar level of detail inside of this to the interior details on the Whomping Willow set. But uh, again, it's, it's about number of pieces and total price. Now, this selection of figures is fantastic. I am so happy with what they've done here and to include 
10 figures in this set is great with accessories a lot of new molds used uh are they all new prints mostly new prints if if not all i think mostly new prints but uh just just great stuff for for the figures it's so collectible in so many of them in a single set that's that's not an expert level you know budget level <laughs> it doesn't cost like three hundred dollars so speaking of the price i think the value here is is pretty decent and uh, especially with the help of of the figures themselves if they didn't have that many figures it would feel a little bit iffy to me but this just does great service to a lot of fans putting so many figures in here at once and the thing is very displayable this whole section is very displayable from the back they try to have as much configurability as reasonably possible in the space with the changeable banners and the the different visions that can show up on the mirror of Eris said the connectability is is pretty much a must but uh you know certainly we could go for more more uh just more structure <laughs> that's that's what this could use more of is just more more of everything uh, i'm very happy with what they've done given the constraints given the number of parts and uh, given the price too i think it's pretty fair that's it for my look at this set though please feel free to share your own thoughts with not only myself but other viewers if you'd like to in the comments and i will talk to you again as soon as i can